Well, ironically, of course, one of the markers that you they will have is where they look at, and they call them triglycerides, by the way. I don't know if they do in Dubai, but they do here. Yeah, triglycerides. And they do most places. So VLDL, as I talked about, very low density lipoprotein, for some weird reason, is called your triglyceride level, right? Although it's a one fifth of your VN, it's just forget about it. But so the VLDL, the stuff that I was talking about that's produced when you eat too many carbohydrates, right? That level is quite important, not in so much as it causes disease of its own, but it's a marker for your eating too many carbohydrates. And that your liver is having to shove, it's having to convert glucose into fat and shove it out. Now, as it does that, what happens is the thing that's called good cholesterol, HDL, right? So people have heard of high density lipoprotein. Again, it's a marker, all right? As VLDL come out of the liver, HDL transfers proteins to it, all right, to allow it to be recognized around the body. It's one of the functions it has. And as it does that, the effect of the HDL level effectively lowers, or it does lower, right? Measurably lower. So when your HDL goes down and your VLDL or triglycerides go up, all right, what this is telling you is you have, and some people would say this is insulin resistance or a marker of heading towards type 2 diabetes, all right? That level, that ratio is 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 it's quite important. I mean, you could just measure someone's blood sugar level or their HbA1c or other things and say, well, actually, we know that anyway. You're not telling us anything new. But if that ratio improves, and then some people will say that's a high cholesterol, or they will say your HDL level, your HDL to cholesterol level is poor. In other words, you've got a low HDL and your overall cholesterol level is high, but that cholesterol level includes VLDL in it, by the way. It's part of a, just a general lumped together figure. So if that figure starts to look wrong, then you'll probably want to do something about it. And that something is to reduce your carbohydrate intake. And then that will tend to normalize. Not always, but almost always, right? And on a population basis, the the most the greatest risk factor for cardiovascular disease is is um type two diabetes or was the trouble with the term type two diabetes is there's a certain point at which you're diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and you go, you've got type 2 diabetes. And if you're like one point lower than that, they go, ah, oh, you don't have type 2 diabetes. Actually, you're on a, a sort of spectrum here from your insulin and your glucose and all that is working fine to you're completely knackered and your blood sugar is too high and your insulin's way off kill. You want to keep that as low as possible all the time. So the thing you, should, you need to be looking at is, you know, some people have these continuous glucose monitors. I don't know if you can get a bit obsessed by that and just sort of constantly looking at it and warning. I don't know. I would, I know. I'd be going, oh my God, that Mars bar is killing me. Um, but no, the, the glucose level and how it's responding and your insulin, that's a much more important thing to be looking at for most people. It's not always the cause of cardiovascular disease, but I was looking at uh, India recently, actually, because I was doing a, an interview with an Indian doctor. And um, and it was fascinating because he he, he works in, in ER uh, emergency medicine and and the rate of heart disease in India is going through the roof by the way and also interesting women have more heart disease in India than men which is another thing everyone tells you women don't get as much heart disease as men I go yes they do um, if they do the wrong things basically but the reason for that often is they've got a lot of what they call central obesity in India. For for whatever reason, it, it, the obesity in India is described as having a BMI greater than twenty five rather than thirty, but it tends to be central obesity. So this central obesity thing, having a high waist hip ratio, having a what they used to call in Britain a beer belly, that shape is it means also it's another sign and indicator that you've got a problem with your metabolism that's going on. All right, and that that is it's the same thing as the VLDL, HDL ratio. It's all telling you the same thing. Your metabolism is is screaming out in pain, all right? Do something about it. Now, what can you do about it? Well, you can take exercise. That's fantastic. Always good. Always recommended. High-intensity exercise is the best, like, hit, what they call high-intensity exercise training, because what that does is it burns the sugar out of your system. You may have heard of, uh, people have heard of anaerobic and aerobic exercises, but anaerobic exercise means you're using sugar as, because you, you're going beyond your oxygen uptake needs, so you burn sugar. Now, when you burn sugar, it's not very efficient, but actually it gets rid of the sugar, which is a good thing. So if you do like two minutes of running on the spot or 
pushing heavy weights, this is good. Whereas actually going for a long run, slow wrong run, although it may use up more energy, that's using up fat and fat's got much more energy in it and blah, blah, blah. So high intensity exercise is good. And then changing your diet is good. And eating less carbohydrates is definitely good.